Hi, everyone. We're going to do a quick session on how to use the Talon Change Data Capture capability inside the Talon Studio. Here's our use case. We have two databases. One is a customer relationship management database, the CRM, and the other one is a hypothetical data warehouse. We're going to mock both of these databases using MySQL. What we want to do is replicate the changes made to the CRM to the data warehouse. And for that, we're going to use CDC. We're going to start off by first clearing out and initializing both the CRM and the data warehouse to have a common set of records. Once we've established that, we're going to create a CDC subscription, and then we're going to make some changes to the CRM. At that point, the CRM will be different than the data warehouse, and we will run a job that uses the Talon Change Data Capture component to move the deltas, just the changes, that were made to the CRM to the data warehouse. So let's get started. Here we have the initial job. We're going to initialize um, both the CRM and the data warehouse with some initial data. And this is our schema. We have an ID, a first, last name, age, city, and company for all of the customers. This is just going to generate 10 random rows and we're using the T-Replicate component from the Talon tool palette. This is going to take that single data input stream, replicate it, and send the same data to the data warehouse and the CRM, where we're doing inserts. So let's run that. And we expect to see 10 records, because that's how many we requested from the row generator. There we go. Let's take a, a quick look at the data using the Talon Data Viewer. And we see we have 10 records, starting with Bill Monroe and extending to record number 10, who's Richard Adams. That's in the data warehouse. Let's do a quick view of the CRM to make sure it's the same thing. Again, Bill Monroe to Richard Adams. So now we're set. Our next task is to create the actual change data subscription. In this case, we're going to go to the publisher. The publisher uh, is the CRM database, and we're here in the metadata repository. So we go to the CDC foundation here, and we right-click and select Create Change Data Capture. Now, when we do change data capture, we have to specify a separate database connection that is pointing to the CDC monitor. And I've created a separate schema for this here, and that's usually a good idea. In addition to specifying the target connection for the CDC monitor, we actually have to create a subscription as well. And this is really triggers. And this is what's getting created in the target CDC monitor database. So I'm just clicking through here, and now we're ready to go. So upon doing that, We've created a CDC monitor in the source database, the CRM. There's one more thing we have to do. The individual tables that we want to replicate have to be connected to that change data capture monitor. We typically don't want to you know, rep have CDC activated for every table in the data source. So it makes sense to have to specify which ones we're interested in replicating. So I'm going to right-click on the source table, the customer's table, and select Add CDC. And I'm going to give a name to this subscription. And I'm going to call it Customers. And I'm specifying which events I'm interested in here. I'm interested in all, all the events, inserts, updates, and deletes. Now let's keep this name for the subscription in mind because we're going to see that again later. Great. Now that we've created the customer CDC subscription, we can see a small green icon. It's pretty hard to see, I imagine, but it says CDC here. So everything is ready to go. So let's make some changes now. We're going to make a delete change 
an update change and an insert change to the customer's uh, table in the CRM source. Just running that, it's very straightforward. We expect to see one record being passed. So if I now take a look at the CRM database, I see that I have a different initial record. It's now ID2 because we deleted the, the row with ID1. And we've modified the name for, the new, for ID2. And we've added one new record with ID100, which is Jackson Harry. Okay, now we expect that we have not yet propagated those changes from the CRM table to the data warehouse table. So if we look at the data warehouse table, it still has not changed. We still start with ID 1, and we only go up to ID 10. We did not add the new ID with record 100. Here is our CRM component. And we can see that it is a TMySQL CDC component. We can also see that it is using the subscriber called customers. This has to match what we set up for the CDC subscriber. With that in mind, if we go to the TMAP component, we'll see that the schema of the CDC is the same as the schema of the data source with the addition of two new fields. One is the creation date for the CDC event, whether it was an insert, an update, or a delete, is captured in the other field. That is the CDC type. So in this case, we are you know, filtering on that type so that we can separate out the inserts, the updates, and the deletes. And we put each of these onto its own output channel. And then we route those events to the appropriate uh, target database connection. And here we are routing the, the inserts, and the action on the target is insert. And the same thing with the update and the delete. So we're ready to run. And we saw that the data warehouse had diverged from the CRM. But after running this, we see the three changes that we made, one delete, one insert, one update. And now we take a quick view with the data viewer. And indeed, the two data sources have converged. We start with ID2 with Ed Ost, and we go now to ID100 with Jackson Harry. That's it for CDC with the Talent Studio. As you can see, it's very simple and straightforward to use.